Hi, thanks for joining us for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. Springtime is when the flowers start blooming. Today we're planning for spring and summer color. Also, cucumbers can be a cool, tasty treat on a hot summer day. We'll learn all about them. That's just ahead on the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Joellen Diamond. Joellen is a TSU Extension Agent in Tipton County, and Master Gardener Tom Monsieur will be joining us later. Hi, right, Joellen. Hi. We're about to plant spring and summer color, right? Yes, this is our fall and winter color uh -huh. for the cabbage and then the pansies. We will be taking all of that up and planting some summer color. Okay, how do you think they did? How did they perform? They did well. Um, they had a little thin on one end, but okay. uh, they were enjoyed all winter long by the everyone who came in yes. WKNO. Yes. So uh, we hope that we'll plant something else that will be equally pleasing to everybody. Okay. But we need to dig these up. Wow, this is always the hard part, huh? Yeah, and oh, everybody no, says, oh, they look so pretty. But it, it, it's time to get them up and get the summer color in. Okay. Let's we'll go ahead and do that. Now go ahead and start pulling some of yeah. these up. Yeah. And we're going to put them in this bag and put them in the compost pile. Uh -huh. We and we leave? have one daffodil. Um, daffodils don't seem to like it here, okay. so I think we're going to take it up and put it somewhere else because we won't be planting daffodils back. We've tried twice and they don't seem to like it, so we're not going to try again. And daffodils usually grow just about anywhere. Wow, well, okay. Sorry to hear. And this one's done very well, but just not what we need. All right, there it goes. And we've amended this bed probably just about as much as we need to amend it. Um, but we still have clods, so uh, we're just gonna mix it up a little bit here just to make sure we break up some clods just a little bit more because we've got some mulch we can freshen up up with for this year and be ready for the spring flowers. Not having to put a whole lot of effort into this which is good because it's obviously very well amended. Just trying to get rid of some clots. Incorporate those into the soil. Well, it's time to look good and rich too. Yes it is. Good sign. All right. Very good. That's good. All right, now, since we are going to be putting another layer of mulch down, uh, we need to put our fertilizer down, our slow release okay. fertilizer. So we'll put that down first, then we'll mulch. Okay. We'll lay out our plants and plant them. Okay. I usually sprinkle it on so that most of the granules are about an inch apart. Okay. Well, it doesn't take very much. All right. And now we're going to put some fertilizer, some mulch, mulch down. Are you breaking up a couple of them? Yeah, the, when you break a little bit, you find a clod, and I just want to break it up so that it continues to get incorporated into this nice material we've got. And it doesn't, it's got some mulch, so we don't want to put too much mulch down. You got it? So I'll just sprinkle a little bit of mulch. Well, that's a good easy way to do that. <laughs> I like that. Now it's time to place the plants out and plant. Okay. 
So again, when you're setting out your plants, what's the best way to do that? Well, this is, uh, there are an even amount of plants. I want it to look uh, like a checkerboard all over the, the, the bed. So I'm gonna evenly space all the plants that we have so you see them throughout the bed. Okay. And what are we planting? Oh, these are these are petunias, and they are the wave petunias, which means they will spread mm -hmm. throughout the bed. So that's why we don't need too terribly many of them, because they will spread out and cover the bed. Mm -hmm. And we're, notice we're not putting them clear up at the top of the bed; we're okay. putting them on the sides. And uh, I guess these, since these are the largest ones. We'll use our trowels and plant them first. Just when you pick them up, you're gonna move the mulch out of the way. Dig your hole. Break up clods if you find them. <laughs> <laughs> just a few. Just a just few. A few. Then you're gonna gently squeeze on the base of the container and take them out. Ah, now you see you got some roots here. The roots. And we don't want them to keep circling, so we're gonna just spread them out just a little bit. You're gonna tease or tickle Te the roots. Tease or tickle <laughs> the roots, a lot of people say that. Okay. And then we're simply gonna plant it, and we want don't wanna plant it deep in the soil, just at the soil level that we have. You don't want to bury the crown. And then we'll simply move the mulch back over the top. All right. And now, it's planted. That's good. Do we need to uh, remove the spent blooms? Is that something that you recommend? Or? Not with the, 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 the wave petunias. Okay. They just kind of are self, uh, they kind of take care of themselves. You okay. don't really have to do a whole lot to them. Good. Which is the one of the reasons why we picked them. Goody, goody. Well, we've got the petunias planted. Next, we are going to put in some vinca, or periwinkle. This is a very pretty little uh, annual that likes a lot of sun, which this bed gets. Okay. Um, it can take, uh, it likes moist, even moist soil. So I think this bed has got a nice, even moist soil because it's irrigated. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll plant it, it's a little bit darker reddish pink okay. now do any of these plants have any major insect or disease problems that we should know about yes they can okay um, but if it, this is a brand new bed and and none of these plants have been planted in here before so we don't normally think that they will have a problem okay um, we will find out this soon because this, you know, this is an experiment. We're okay. trying to see what all we can grow. We knew the begonias and the lantana and the citricia uh -huh. did well last year. We're going to see if petunias, vinca, and, and salvia do well this year. Right. Experimenting. I like We're that. experimenting. Right. And I guess we'll plant these now. Right. Again, don't plant them too deep. Okay. We don't want them to be too wet. Soil level is good. Lastly, we have some lavender purple salvia. Those look good. To put in I like here. the color. So we'll have a pinks and lavender bed this year. Got. Oh. Wow, wow. How about that? These are very well rooted. Mm -hmm. So we may have to uh, separate these roots just a little bit as we plant them. And we're going to fill in with these. Yeah, the roots are very root bound. So we're gonna need to pull that circling of the container apart at the base so that it will stop doing that and anchor itself into the ground. Again, don't plant it deep, just at soil level. This is why we always tell folks, you know, when you're buying plants, slide them out of the container. Yeah. Yeah, take a look at the roots and see if it's root bound or not. And there's nothing wrong with that, but yeah. uh, just know you'll have a little bit of an extra step before mm -hmm. you plant. How 
All right. The last Here we one. go. The last plant. Now we need to water them in, mm -hmm. and hopefully the irrigation system will take over and keep them moist throughout the growing season. We'll see how these three plants do this year. I hope they do well. <laughs> Thanks I do again, too. Joanna. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. All right, Mr. Tom, let's talk about cucumbers. Ah, uh, one of my favorite vegetables. Ah, uh -huh. uh, I realize it's a fruit, uh -huh. legally speaking, <laughs> but if it's in the garden, it's a vegetable. It's a vegetable. <laughs> it's a vegetable. <laughs> All right, so you, you want to start with varieties first? Yeah, uh, there is a tremendous number of varieties of uh, cucumbers. Uh, I'm particularly partial toward the light-skinned okay. cucumbers. You got the dark skins like straight eights and so forth and some bush cucumbers. Uh, the thing I like about the light-skinned ones is they don't seem to get bitter in the summertime. Especially the, my favorite, I mentioned a couple years ago, is Sumter, S-U-M-T-E-R. Mm -hmm. It's a pickling cucumber. It is good flat eating. <laughs> uh, and like I said, it never gets bitter. A lot of times on the dark green cucumbers uh, that you can prevent the bitterness to a certain degree by maintaining a a moist, moist uh, soil. Okay. Well, usually cause the bitterness is switching from dry to wet soil. Uh -huh. And that pretty much causes it. Like I said, with the uh, light skinned ones, you don't have to worry about that. But like I said, there is a tremendous variety. They go from uh, small ones to uh, one of the larger ones is the uh, Armenian yard long. Uh -huh. And it, it grows in a curve and you can get 24 or longer. Uh, and so, I, mean, I think I had actually one that did actually grow three feet. Uh, but uh, it's an unusual one. It doesn't produce that many, but what it does produce are big. Big. Yard. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yard. It's in the name. Mm -hmm. How about that? Now, what about planting cucumbers? How do we need to prepare the soils and how do we need to plant those? Well, uh, typically, it's, it's not a very uh, demanding uh, plant. Okay. Uh, you, matter of fact, you don't even have to till it. You can just dig a hole. <laughs> and, and plant it. Now, I like to start pretty much all my plants uh, in containers and then transplant them. Uh, I don't like to get down on my hands and knees and thin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if I have anything I got to do, I'll do it in a flat and then pot them that way. I even uh, I start now my beets in uh, containers. Uh, those multi-cell, 54 to account, uh, flat type cells. Okay. Having tremendous success with that. Okay. But... Uh, as far as, and, and that's pretty much it. Now, uh, when I first started growing cucumbers, I just let them sprawl. But as I start putting more things in my garden, like blue, uh, blueberries and stuff like that, my garden area gets smaller and smaller. So I went to trellising them, and I used the cow panels, and I put them on the back or the south side of the garden so they don't shade the plants in front of them. Okay. Tremendous success doing that. They just climb right up. Initially, you have to give them a little head start, you know, tell them where to go. <laughs> and then once they uh, figure out, that, hey, this is where I need to go, they'll start wrapping their tendrils around it, right. and they up they it. go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what about soil pH? Cucumbers, like most vegetables, they like it on a slightly acid range. Seven is neutral, mm -hmm. as most people know. But uh, 6.8 and all the way up to 7.3, which is slightly uh, sweet, mm -hmm. they do fine. No big problem. Okay. All right, so what about fertilizing? Do you fertilize your cucumbers? Yes, I do. Uh, of course, a lot of it depends on your uh, soil, and as every master gardener knows, yeah. first thing you always say is take a soil sample. Yeah. But on the soil samples, they don't test for nitrogen mm -hmm. because it's very migratory, and uh, the vast majority of nitrogen is in the air. So you put nitrogen in your soil, eventually it wants to go back home. <laughs> so you have to keep adding it where the uh, phosphorus, potassium, our minerals, they have a tendency to stay in the soil. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is I like to alternate. I like to, uh, and I fertilize lightly every two weeks. And I alternate between a high nitrogen fertilizer and then two weeks later, a balanced fertilizer. Okay. 15, 15, 15, 10, 10, 10. 
13, 13, 13. And uh, by doing that, it seems to be the right combination. Okay. And the secret for growing uh, big plants, one word, nitrogen. Nitrogen. <laughs> one word. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and what about diseases, though? You know, because these are vines, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to be bunched up together, you know, for the most part. What about diseases? Well, uh, the cucumber beetle is probably the number one major problem. Okay. Uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Okay. And uh, seven, or carabel, is that how you pronounce it? Carabel. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't have to be seven, but it's a carabel right. product. Uh, sprayed on it. And I like to use the liquid because it's you know, with the liquid I can get under the leaves and okay. stuff like that, which is much easier way of doing it than trying to do it with the powder. And the powder has a tendency to wash off the rain. The liquid type uh, has a little bit more persistency to it, but uh, keeping it sprayed once every seven to ten days, as uh, Mike used to say, uh, mm -hmm. will work great for you. Now, I do not know the uh, organic equivalent. Uh, I did a lot of research, and I got a lot of opinions, <laughs> but nothing factual as mm -hmm. I can take to the bank. Right, right. But that's the number one problem. Uh, you don't have to worry about the squash borers because the vines are so uh, thin that the little critter that does dry, lays the eggs doesn't bother it. Okay. And by the way, the uh, uh, cucumbers are a member of the cucurbits mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. uh, and a distinguishing character is that they have male blossoms <clears throat> and female blossoms on the same plant. And it's not really hard to identify it. Uh, on the squash, by the way, all the members of that includes not only cucumbers, but uh, all your squashes, mm -hmm. your melons, cantaloupes. And on the uh, squash, watermelons, cantaloupes, it's really easy to distinguish the male from the female and the fact that the male flower just has a straight stem and a blossom, mm -hmm. whereas the female has a miniature fruit behind right. the blossom. And uh, if you want to speed up germinate, uh, pollination, mm -hmm. All you have to do is take a brush and go from the male flower to the female flower. And like I always mention, you know, uh, soft music is optional. <laughs> um, and the, the more uh, fruit that's on the plants, the smaller the fruit's going to be. Sure. But uh, it's just kind of cute. I like, I like looking at I always like showing people that. Right. You know, right. The male and the female. It is pretty cool to see, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, like I said, they're all members of the same family. And the distinguishing character... As you know, that uh, when they grouping plants together is the blossom. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and since they all have male and female, that's how come they're all gathered together. Okay. Now you talked about the the, the pest problems with cucumbers. What about diseases? Mm -hmm. Are there any diseases we need to know about? Not that I have uh, noticed. There is some diseases listed. Okay. But they're they're very kind of rare. Okay. Uh, I think more of uh, commercial farmers growing cucumbers would probably be more affected by the diseases than your typical uh, mm -hmm. home gardener. But as far as the other diseases go, if you got infested, the only thing you can do is pull them out and trash them. Do not throw them in a compost pile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Tom, we appreciate the information about cucumbers. All oh, right. I appreciate it. This Florida nace that we planted a few weeks ago out here in front of WKNO is wilty looking, yet the ground is moist. What could possibly be wrong? Well, I think it's transplant shock. Uh, this might have been grown in a covered area and these leaves just haven't hardened off into the outside temperatures. Um, or uh, it might have a little bit more sun than it likes for right now. But mostly, I think it's transplant shock that it's just not used to this environment. Going to have to have some time to get used to it. The roots may not be able to absorb enough moisture to keep it, um, the leaves from being wilted during the heat of the day. So we will wait and see what happens with this plant. But for right now, I think it just has transplant shock. All right, it's our Q&A session. Mr. Tom, you help us out, okay? All right, here's our first viewer email. 
My rose has a problem. The foliage appears to be healthy. However, as the bud opens, the petals look shriveled. I looked for insects, but didn't find any. What's up? And this is from Brian right here in Memphis. Jolene, what do you think's wrong with that? Well, I think the picture that he sent will, will help a little more. Yeah. Um, that's a little dried up. That's dried it's hard up to, right there. Hard, hard to tell with mm -hmm. that. But uh, from the picture, it looks like uh, something has been chewing on it. Either you know, aphids notoriously be around buds, but he says he didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. So possibly it could be maybe thrips, because you can't really see thrips. Agreed. I grow roses at home, mm -hmm. and I think the answer to the question are thrips. Mm -hmm. okay? You need a lens, magnifying glass, to see them. Mm -hmm. Okay. What happens is they're sap suckers. Mm -hmm. So they're feeding on the leaves, they're feeding on the of course, the blooms and the petals, mm -hmm. right? So that feeding actually causes that bloom to partially open or prematurely close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think that is, thrips. Now, controlling thrips, pretty tough. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've used in the past insecticidal soap, but you have to catch them when they're very young, right? You have to know the life cycle, <laughs> catch them in the stages where, of course, you know, that's gonna work. Mm -hmm. So you can use, again, insecticidal soaps work. You can use something that contains bifenthrin if you want to pull out the heavy you know, guns there, or acephate is something else, or some of your soil drenches actually has, will suppress you mm -hmm. know, those thrips. Mm -hmm. But it's up to you to decide which one you want to use. Mm -hmm. But I would go with the insecticidal soap first. All right, so I think that's what that is. Well, I hope that helps you out. Here's our next viewer email. My red tip for tinea has reddish spots all over the leaves. Is it sick? Entomosporium leaf spot is mm -hmm. what that is. You know, yes. um, it's common. See it all around the landscape for the most part. So fungal leaf spot is what it is. Yeah. What do we do to combat that? Well, there's a, a, a preventative again. Mm -hmm. You have to spray before you get the disease. Uh, you really need to, and you keep spraying throughout the growing season mm -hmm. if you want to keep them without spots. Yeah, um, tough. Dacanel 2787, and there's a lot of products out there mm -hmm. that have that chemical formulation in them for a fungicide, and that can control that. Right. But it's not going to eliminate it because Fatinia and this leaf spot are like synonymous with yes, each other. Yes, they are. And you know, if if it really bothers you that much and, it, and it's really bad and it starts to get so bad that it starts killing the plant, then I would suggest taking that out and planting something else in its right, place. Right. Uh, but it, when the leaves drop off of it, collect them and get mm -hmm. rid of them because the spores are still exactly. on the leaves. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks bad aesthetically. Of course, mm -hmm. and then yeah, it can cause those leaves to drop off prematurely, yes. like you just mentioned. So mm -hmm. yeah, practice good sanitation is what I always tell folks. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Resistant varieties. There if you have few, to have, yeah. you know, a red tip for ten. Um, and just watch your watering. Uh -huh. Because right. if right. you leave water on the leaves and water stays yeah. on the leaves, you don't have enough air circulation through there. They can't right. dry off, and then that's going to cause more leaf spots. That's exactly right. Right. And also uh, removing exactly. any debris uh, around the ground, around right. the roses. Right. Because mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't like that. Right. Again, practice good sanitation. Mm -hmm. Like Joel had mentioned, get those mm -hmm. up. You know, Mr. D always says double bag them and throw them in the trash. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, get rid of those and you'll be just fine. But yeah, synonymous, you know, this disease is synonymous with red tint. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. I mean, it's, you see them all over the place. Okay. All right, here's our next viewer email. My oak tree has a growth on one of the branches. The growth is as big as the branch and has misshapen leaves coming out of it. What is causing this? And this is from Grant in Arlington. And as we take a look there, mm -hmm. um, Joan, I know you know a little bit about trees, okay, because of your background. What, yeah. what did you think about that growth, though? Well, but the rest of the leaves look perfectly fine. Right, right. And they're they look, past they where that leaf spot node is. Yeah. And so uh, just to keep it from, I would just <laughs> take it off. Oh, just take it off. I would just right. take it off and get rid of it. And uh, and the only other thing that I see on in, from their picture is that it, there's a little bit of iron chlorosis mm -hmm. going on. I can see a little green veining in the leaves. Uh -huh. So I'm wondering about nutrition uh -huh. and possibly a lack of nutrition. So maybe a little fertilizer, maybe a little fertilizer with iron in it uh -huh. so we can, you know, take care of that iron chlorosis that's going on. It's just a beginning. Okay. That's a good catch by you, though. Mm -hmm. Good catch. Uh, but yeah, you're right. The, the leaves, yeah, look 
The rest of them you know, are fine. On that branch, you know, look fine. You know, mm -hmm. they did develop, but yeah, a little chlorosis there. Yeah. You know, that can get corrected, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, by the means you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, just, just something odd. Take it off and see if it happens mm -hmm. again. Right, and we hope most likely won't. Yeah, most likely it won't. And we hope that the rest of the plant, you know, looks good as well. We didn't see all of it, mm -hmm. but we're hoping that it does. Maybe it's just one branch that he talked about on this oak tree. But there you have it, Mr. Grant from Joel and herself. Right. So, Joel, Mr. Tom, we're out of time. Thank okay. you. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplots at wkno.org. And the mailing address is Family Plot 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee 38016. Or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. If you want to find out more information about any of the things we talked about on today's show, head on over to familyplotgarden.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next week for the Family Plot Gardening in the Mid South. Be safe.